Okay, so today I'm going to be making a start at a long overdue project which I intended to start doing lockdown but didn't. And that's learning to use a MIG welder with an eye to restoring my classic car. Now the MIG welder I chose, largely due to good write-ups on the forums etc, was this Clark MIG Pro 90. Um, quite a low powered MIG, ideal according to the forums for body work and those kinds of things and I've, there's a lot of that to be done on the MG. Okay so here's the unit itself and it measures around 25 centimeters wide, 43 centimeters long and just over 30 centimeters high. It's a pretty simple control interface. We have the wire speed or Y feed speed control and these two switches giving four different power settings. The unit comes with a pretty good little instruction book actually. Um, I know we're not famously good at reading in instructions but um, this one contains all you need to know about setting up the unit as well as a few welding tips, maintenance um, information etc etc side of the unit takes off quite easily with one hand and inside you find the bits you need to get started so we've got a small small bottle of welding gas so we get one of these little disposable bottles of, of carbon dioxide to get us started with in fact, in the instruction manual, it indicates that the CO2 is ideal for mild steel, and that CO2 argon mix would be is ideal for thin sheet metal. So I will order a couple of those bottles as well. Now it's worth pointing out, most people will talk about quickly dispensing with these disposable bottles. It supposedly gets quite expensive if you're doing a lot of welding, um, usually using a pub gas regulator and getting a, a bigger bottle um, like that. Um, I'll start out with these and see how we get along. There's also a little clamp to attach the gas bottle to the back of the unit. There's also a little gas bottle regulator included. Now I'm told these are, or I read that these are pretty crappy. It's pretty much all on or off, so not very efficient on use of gas, nor very controllable. But again, let's give it a go. Came with the kit and see how we get along with that to start with. I did buy another one. Um, and when I found that, we'll probably move to that. And a one kilogram spool of 0 0.6 millimeter welding wire. There's also a spare tip included. This one is a 0 0.8 millimeter tip with the Pro 90. Um, the torch it comes pre-fitted with a 0 0.6 millimeter tip. So let's get all of this set up and see how we get along. There are a few other things, of course, you need to safely weld with. One being a face mask. You now I've bought an auto darkening one, as I'm basically the the hold by hand one that comes with the the unit is is effectively pretty useless. And we'll see how we get along with this one. Um, this wasn't particularly expensive on Amazon. Uh, whether it's any good, we'll find out. And also some welding gauntlets, so some heavy duty leather gloves to protect from burns. So I'm now going to run through the assembly instructions. First piece or first item being to get the wire spool in place. A couple of tips I've read are both to make sure a you've got a nice clean spool of welding wire. It will go rusty if left to sit around for too long and also that you have a clean burr-free cut for threading it through as both things will knacker the liner on the feed to the torch without this. So schoolboy area number one putting the spool on. I um, actually took off the tape on the wire to have a quick look at it um, for no good reason and it started to rapidly uncoil so it does say so in the instructions don't remove the little bit of tape holding the the wire onto the spool before you start the assembly process. Now the instructions suggest tightening the spool where there's a slight amount Break in friction so this turns very easily but the moment I lift off it stops so I'm going to start with that and see how that is. 
Next step is to loosen this plastic knob, pivot this down, pop this bit up to access the roller. Next, taking care not to release it, we feed the wire into the black tube over the roller and into the tube with a little bit of blue coating shown there. Okay, so once we're over the roller and into the liner, it says to feed about 15 centimetres of wire in. Then we need to reposition the roller and refasten that. Now again, in terms of tightness, it indicates that you shouldn't over tighten it because that can crush the wire and damage the wire feed motor, but too loose will not allow the wire to be pulled by the roller. Not entirely sure how to gauge that, but um, again, start with fairly loose and see how we go. If it slips, then we can always tighten slightly. Next up, we remove the torch shroud and contact tip. Okay. It then says to replace the panel on the side, plug in, and then feed the wire through. Now we set the speed to six or seven and start to feed it through until the tip, the wire appears at the tip. There we go. Now, of course, with the power switched off, we reassemble the torch end, first the tip, and then on with the, the shroud. Now on to the gas. The gas bottle just attaches to the rear of the unit with this little Jubilee clip. Regulator goes on with a standard screwing action. They say don't over tighten. I think it's all brass fittings. That's generally good advice. So loose the hand tight. Let's give that a quick test. Seems to work. The gas hose then just pushes into the regulator. Okay, as far as that goes. This coupling self-sealing, so when you want to release the hose, you pull in this to um, clamp and release the hose. We appear to have gas at the business end. So to start with, I've got some roughly 20 gauge, so just under a millimeter thick sheet steel, and I'm gonna have a play with welding this corner back on. But I'll probably start with running a few a few beads along the metal first. Um, to help me, I've also sourced some clamps. Um, these little clamps allow you to hold two pieces of metal close together for a butt weld with about a one millimeter gap, which is supposed to be about perfect. And I've also got some of these magnetic clamps off eBay, again, to hold things nicely, especially when dealing with corners or right angles, etc. Okay, so I set things up and had a play, and to be honest at first, pretty hard going. Um, blowing holes, lack of penetration, not getting the wire speed right. You know, it's, it seems worth getting a bit of scrap metal like this and practicing, practicing, practicing to try and get a good result. However, after five, ten minutes of playing about, things have started to improve. So this time, I've tried some of the different settings, and... I've now got to a point where with the Y speed of five on max and one, the two switches set, I'm getting to a better looking bead. And critically on the other side, I'm getting better penetration. So this first example doesn't look too bad to my eyes, but obviously as a, once you look underneath, you see that there isn't really any meaningful penetration. So I upped the Y speed 
one notch and then we start to see a more convincing weld on both sides of the sheet. So those are the settings for those my best better looking welds so far. So five Y feed max and one on just under one millimetre steel with 0.6 millimetre wire. So after a bit of playing, starting to get to a better looking result, i.e. reasonably neat looking welds on one side. When I flip it over, also starting to see good penetration, or what I believe is reasonable penetration, on the other side. So for my last effort for the day, I've chopped off this corner. I'm going to try and spot weld this back on and see what it ends up, how it ends up looking. Bear in mind, I've never welded before, total novice, and it's really about understanding whether a total novice can pick up a word like this and get a vaguely acceptable result. So let's see how we go. Quick test. Okay, so I spot welded the corner back on and I've attacked it with the angle grinder to tidy it up and you know what? I'm encouraged. Obviously it's my first ever attempt so it's pretty rough and ready. I've blown away the edges a bit. Um, actually you can see on the other side the penetration isn't enough in places so you know it does need some work. But I'm pretty encouraged. I think with a bit of practice I'm confident I'll be able to get some reasonable results out of the unit. So the Clark Pro 90 MIG welder. First impressions pretty favourable. I'll certainly be um, posting some follow-ups with work on the the MG as I get round to it and let's see how we go. A bit more practice needed but yeah happy with my purchase so far.